What's up guys? It's Nastasia Nikolaou here with The Nocturnal. I'm going to be interviewing I Vinder, who is going to be featured on Euphoria's special episode coming out with HBO. Her song Love Me Low is going to be featured on the episode. I can't wait to talk to her all about her experience working with Euphoria and what it was like to get to this point. She has such an interesting story from where she comes from to how she broke into the music industry and moving into LA. So I can't wait to talk to her all about her experience. So stay tuned and watch me interview iBender. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. I just want to make sure I pronounce your name correctly really quickly. So it's I, right? Yes, I. Oh, very cool. I'm Nastasia. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I, everything is going so well like honestly you know quarantine is crazy but mm -hmm. I feel like hearing stories like yours has been like super inspiring because for you to have made a song during the pandemic like just six months ago and now you have this like crazy. completely different life like I I'm just so inspired by what you did with like this time in lockdown and how you were able to create art and now you're going to be featured on freaking euphoria yeah. and you have new songs coming out i i mean it is just so cool like i just want to talk to you all about your story and like what it was like to get from you know you're from michigan right yeah yeah yeah, so I understand that your parents are immigrants. So your dad, he's like Nigerian, and then your mom is Australian and from Singapore, right? Yeah. 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 And and then you guys moved to Michigan. So you you've moved all over the place. Yeah, yeah, sorta. Of. Wow, I didn't expect you to know so much. Oh my gosh, yeah, girl. Your story has really, really inspired me. I was just doing some digging, some research, preparing to talk to you, but I didn't realize like what a multicultural background you actually have, but I understand now, now you live in LA, recently you moved to LA, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what was that like transition like going from Michigan to LA? Oh my gosh, it was, it was so exciting because, well, basically I signed my record deal maybe like two-ish months ago and in between then it was just like a bunch of waiting time just waiting for everything to be like ratified and during that time I was just at home in Michigan and like the way that I would keep myself entertained was writing songs and stuff but you know obviously it's a pandemic and you know we couldn't go out anywhere so like every day just felt sort of the same but I moved here like two weeks ago now and like it's just been like so busy since I've come here but I love it and like it all has to do with my music and I'm just I'm so hyped for this year I think it's gonna be a really good year that's yeah. so awesome I mean for you to have gone from like I I I read a little bit about you and it, they said that you were making songs like in a makeshift kind of recording studio in <laughs> Michigan and like in a boiler room at one point you were writing songs and trying to like put things together and like working with what you have you know not everyone comes from like the LA lifestyle where we're like all working with like music producers and have a label so you really started from like your own craft and writing songs but where where did that inspiration come from because Love Me Low the song that's going to be featured on Euphoria mm -hmm. for those that don't know like that is such a happy and sad song like yeah yeah it, it's such a it's such a powerful song but for for you to be like 17 like where did that deepness come from I mean first off thank you so much like I I can't believe you know so much already you did your research um but I mean for me I feel like I've always just really loved writing music. Like before, um, I mean, you know, I'm from an immigrant household and a huge part of like sort of a stereotype about immigrants is that education is like super important to them. Like this is kind of the reason why they went to America. And so they were always pushing for me to like be like an engineer or something and go to Harvard and like be an engineer or something like that or a doctor or something. Um, but like no, making the music, yeah the art field is just like was a no-go and I was always like 
discouraged from it, but it was just always something that I really loved to do. Like, I remember like my earliest memory that I can remember was um, watching America's Got Talent. I was either four or five years old or something like that. And there was like a girl singing up on the stage and I, and I told my whole family that I wanted to do that. Um, but they all discouraged me at that point. Like at that time, it was like, no, Chiyomi, you can't do that. No, 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 no. But um, I mean, it never like, my love for it like never went away. Like I, I feel like I was just like born with it, to be honest. I've just always loved writing songs. I've always loved making music. Um, but when it comes like to inspirations, um, I would say like what inspires me to write music is legitimately like my life. Like it's my outlet. It's the thing that I just like, I'm always drawn to go to and like, it's how I express myself. So all of my songs, they come from like some place about me. Like it's from some aspect in my life and um, Love Me Low, that was written about a relationship. So that, that's where that comes from. Yeah. So it was from your own like personal experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what was it like though for you to make that song based off your personal experience? Excuse me. What was it like for you to make that song based off of your personal experience and then go to, you know, talking with producers, maybe trying to get your song picked up somewhere? Like, I don't know exactly how it works, mm -hmm. but what was it like for you once you found out okay my song's gonna be featured on a huge tv show like hbo yeah. cares about what i'm doing people want to know who i am like did you f have that feeling of like oh I'm, I'm starting to make it like this this is this could be my my career honestly like it all feels like so surreal right now especially because like it's quarantine you know what i'm saying and like so things sort of feel a bit less like you know, moving, I guess. But now that I'm in Los Angeles, like it feels like so much more real. And I'm just like, I've been getting so excited about this whole thing. But like, I like a few years ago, I decided, or not a few years ago, like two years ago, maybe was when I decided that I really, really wanted to be a musician. And it was just, it was like, at the time, it was like the only thing that was making me happy. It was the only thing that like, I felt like I wanted to do at all. So, um, yeah, I just, I decided to go for it yeah. um, just because it was like, it was so, such a natural thing for me to want to do. Like, I always wanted to write music and like, that's how I felt about Love Me Low. It was just a song that like, I just, like, it just kind of poured out of me. Yeah. And um, I just worked with um, a producer who heard songs that I had released before because before I was an, ind before I released Love Me Low, I was an independent artist and I had a few songs out before then um and these producers they heard my voice and they were like oh my gosh I would love to work with you and I was like ah like it was it's just like it's so it's such a crazy thing that like that people really want to listen to me and want to learn about me like I've been telling people that like throughout this whole experience I've been like hesitant to feel like proud of myself because I feel like so much of this is like a gift to me and I just feel like so special like out of everything I feel just beyond grateful for everything that's been happening and like to for my debut single to be in euphoria like are you kidding me I don't even watch that many tv shows but I watched that show and it was like already became like one of my favorite shows that I've ever watched and like when I watched it I imagined myself like being one of the characters in the show or something like that and I daydreamed about you know how cool it would be like if I could somehow be a part of it and now I get to be a part of it which is incredible which is like I like I really came like so quickly from you know being the only person that believed in myself to now having people that actually believe in me which is like such a wonderful like feeling and I'm like I'm beyond grateful for it and I just I can't wait to see what this year is gonna do and I hope people like what I put out yeah. I'm sure they're gonna love what you put out I mean like you said it is like a natural talent that you have to write music and to create music because it's one thing to just be a singer but it's another thing to be able to kind of produce your own music and write your own music um that's really special 
I, I do want to talk about though, you being the only one to kind of believe in yourself. Like um, you said that your parents weren't supportive because they wanted you to go more of the, you know, brainiac, more, more practical type yeah. of job route, which is, can be a struggle within like the entertainment industry when you are a creative person and you're like, I, I don't want to be an engineer. I want to write music. Um, what like kept you going and were you just kind of like, you know, it's going to work out eventually or like it, it will happen. What was that mentality? It seems like you had to be super grounded, positive in, in yourself to, despite your parents not supporting you. I mean, like for like my whole life, it's just been kind of a thing that I was always, I just kept doing it no matter what people told me to. Like my siblings, I remember my sister, like she was so annoyed whenever I would sing. And every time I would sing, she would tell me to shut up. And like, I would when she told me to, but I would eventually just start singing again, just because like, that was what I was so inclined to do. But like, there was a point in my life, maybe like two years ago where like, it, w it was like, I, I was in a very like, dark place I was in a very low point and what I, I realized the only thing that was helping me hang on um was music it that was literally the only thing and that's when I decided I was like okay like to me this life is not going to be worth living if it's not going to be happy and the only thing that makes me happy is music so I don't care anymore I'm just gonna go for this because if I can't be happy then like what the hell and so that that was just kind of it I was just like I'm I'm just gonna do this and everyone else can like suck my dick for real <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no my. it's it's you say you said it right like I have to be happy you know like it doesn't matter like I got I have to do what makes my soul happy I think music has that ability to connect us all and it is so powerful because it really does speak to so many people um with some of your other music too like run away or other songs that you might be putting out in the future are you trying to kind of have them all connect is is there some type of storyline or what what um inspiration for the songs that are gonna come out where where did you find that inspiration I'm, I'm glad that you say that because I've always found it so funny. Um, I have about like 14 songs right now or like 16 oh that are unreleased right now just because I've been writing so much wow. um, over this quarantine. And when I write these songs, there's like no theme in my head. It's never like I sit down and I'm like, okay, I'm going to write a song. And that's sort of why I always like feel a little bit hesitant to feel proud of myself because it's almost like, the tunes sort of just like fly into my head and then I'm just able to like kind of like put them out but when I listen to the songs back and when I'm like listening to my whole catalog I just find it interesting how it does tie together because all of my songs they do come like from a personal place like every time I write a song it's because like I'm thinking about my life or like about how I'm feeling and then it just sort of comes out and because you know my life is you know, it's a story in itself. Like my songs are also able to tell a story. And I think it's so cool because it's telling my story and it's telling how I feel. And I'm excited for others to listen to it because, you know, I think they'll be able to relate to it well. And I feel like they'll be able to enjoy it as much as I will. Um, yeah, but uh, some of the themes that are in it are, um, I mean, there are some, for, for all of my songs, it has its own theme where it's like somebody can listen to it generally and think it, it was like a love song or something like that. But to me personally, there are some, there are songs that like are about, you know, um, how much I want music to work and how it was like um, the thing that was keeping me on sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I have to say about that, but I'm super excited. Yeah, it's interesting how like music can really, really affect our like mental health. I think that's so important to kind of talk about too. It's just like, you know, with everything going on in the world and 
everything that people have been experiencing. Like music is that outlet for so many people. Um, your songs make me want to cry. Your songs make me want to like feel all the feelings. Like for real, it really does like move me and I think it will move a lot of people. Now, without giving any spoilers away because you know, we don't know, I'm a Euphoria fan too. Like I, I'm like you in the fact that like, I, I don't watch a whole lot of TV but I did binge Euphoria and it's just, it's so good. So the fact that it's that TV show makes it even more exciting. But do you know anything about how your, how your song is gonna be used? Can you give us any type of teaser without giving anything away? Yeah, I can because that's what they sort of gave me. I mean, I feel so lucky because they're actually using so much of the song, they're using like 50 seconds to a minute of the song. That's like, the, that's like almost the whole song. I know. It's like, the song is like two and a half minutes long or something like that. So I was like, ah, crazy. Yeah. Um, but it's supposed to be, um, it's supposed to be like a sweet, tender scene between um, mm -hmm. Rue and Jules. Oh and my I think gosh, that is so, it's going to be so good. Yeah, if I remember correctly, that's what it is. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, but I'm so excited to see it. I'm so excited. It's gonna be crazy to hear my voice behind it. I'm Seriously. so excited. And, yeah. and as far as other projects in the future, like you said you have 14 to 16 songs that haven't been released yet. Do we, we know when the album's gonna come out? Oh, I'm definitely releasing a project this year. But it's just a matter of like, the order in which everything is going to come out like i've been talking with my team right now and everyone's so excited about what i have and right now we're just making a plan about how we're gonna go about releasing all these things um it's probably going to be a couple singles and then a project and i'm not sure whether it's going to be an ep or an album but either way i'm so excited and i think everyone's going to really like it so very happy yeah. Well, I, I'm so excited for you. I'm, I'm so, Thank I'm you. so, I can't wait to see the episode with your song and see what you come up with. I know music is a process, so we're, we're going to be on the edge of our seats waiting to see what you, um, what you release, but I, I really do appreciate your time talking with me. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, is there anything that you could say to other people who may be like making music in their own home studio or like maybe across the world and they want to get into the industry but just don't know how? Like, is there any advice or words that you can say to those people? Yeah, I mean, I guess I could say something in general to people that have like big dreams at all, but like nothing is too outlandish, nothing is too childish ever. If it's something you love and if it's, and if you believe in yourself, like I truly believe like nothing is gonna stop you. So you just gotta stay strong and keep, keep going. <laughs> on that note, yeah, on that note, that's what we gotta stick with if we have to hold on to that. So thank you for your words of positivity and for your art, you are going to move mountains. I, I can't, I can't believe it. Um, but congratulations on, you know, your newfound success and I wish you the best of luck in LA too. Thank you so much. You're such a sweet person and it was wonderful talking to you this morning. <laughs> wonderful Thank talking you. to you too. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. bye.